Happy New Year! I welcome 2021 with a lot of excitement, especially taking into account how weird and unpredictable 2020 was, and it still ended up being a year filled with new, exciting things and impressive music releases. Global issues aside, 2021 has everything to be an awesome year for CU and 2D music projects. After the changes in the industry that introduced us to no audience and sound-only live shows, as well as how we got music by our favorite male CU available on streaming platforms worldwide, 2021 is a year in which all artists and 2D music projects will have those tools available to them and, who knows, continue to innovate and, at the same time, not forget about overseas fans by the end of the day. The quality of the music released in 2020 was off the charts. I don't remember when was the last time that I had handed so many 4.5 out of 5s or perfect 5s to releases. There was no shortage of good music. Rock, pop, EDM, jazz, R&B, ballads and acoustic tunes. Music for all tastes and with quite the high quality level, both the production and performance sides. With that in mind, in this episode I will go over the best albums released in 2020. You're still here? Then let's kick off episode 22 of CU Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to Say You Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today I will be talking about the best albums released in 2020 that went straight to my favorites list. First off, some of you might already be familiar with my reviewing style and what are the music genres that I usually enjoy the most or even the types of singing voices that I fancy. If you are actually aware of that, this episode won't have many surprising moments for you, at least, I don't think so. If you actually don't care about music reviews and are not familiar with my reviewing style, then you'll be surprised with some of the names mentioned. Nevertheless, I try to avoid mentioning the same male CU more than once, so at least this list may be a bit different from usual. A note that, unfortunately, due to copyright, I won't be sharing previews of the songs directly in the episode. I will, however, leave in the description links to those songs or releases, so make sure to check those out. This episode, of course, includes a highly subjective list, so I welcome you to name your favorite albums of 2020 in the comments. Would love to know what were the releases that had you going in 2020, those that were the source of inspiration, energy and motivation. A note that, despite uh, wanting to add Gran Rodeo's singles collection Rodeo Beat Shake, let's be honest, best of albums are essentially a packaging rehash with only one or two new songs in the mix. It's not necessarily a new album, that's why it doesn't get into this list. Still, know that it was, in my opinion, one of the best releases in 2020, coming from a band that I deeply love. Final note, the entries in this episode are ranked from 11th to number 1. Without further ado, let's kick off this episode. Wataru Hatano with Never End Summer. While I am not a big fan of music with a peppy summer vibe, Wataru Hatano managed to deliver quite the mature and more contained take on the genre. But as much as I enjoyed Never End Summer, the best song in this release is Vivid Junction. Chilling, futuristic, synthwave made its way into male seiyuu music territory. And I couldn't be more excited about it. In case you are not aware of, synthwave is the kind of music genre that feels like a revival of 80s synthpop 
but attaches to it a futuristic vibe, a vibe of a future you've never lived but are nostalgic about. This is a niche music genre and I thoroughly love. And although the CU and Annie song industries love to explore trendy music genres, they live in the corner niche music genres like synthwave. So when I came across Vivid Junction, I couldn't believe what was happening. Male CU performing synthwave. This was too good to be true. And better yet, Wataru Hatano was singing it. I love Hatano to bits. I find him as an insanely talented singer, but unfortunately highly underrated, which is a pity. He has one of the best voices and technique among Seiyu that are solo artists. Vivid Junction was like a dream come true to me, and it has been in heavy rotation since I reviewed it. Vivid Junction is the kind of song I don't want to end. Trigger with Crescent Rise Since I went to Hong Kong to watch the live viewing session of Idolish 7's second live reunion, I was in love with the title track. Crescent Rise came as a complete surprise to me as I was working abroad and I hadn't picked up the game for the whole duration of my stint in Asia. Contrary to all other fans in the tendus of that live, Crescent Rise was truly a new song for me, never before heard. I still recall Soma Saito nervously presenting the song during the first day of the live show. He mentioned that he had practiced the song and the dance only recently and wasn't sure he would do good. I knew that the song would be good, Saito is a freaking perfectionist, after all. All that nervousness only came from wanting to match the quality and being afraid of not being able to do it. And my guess was right. As soon as those overdriven guitars started playing, I knew this song would turn into my jam. I love a good overdriven guitar part and dark instrumentalization in my favorite music. And Trigger's Crescent Rise added all plus the awesome vocals of Wataru Hatano, Soma Saito and Takuya Sato on top, in what is one of the trio's best performances to date. From its debut in July 2019 to its release in January 2020, Crescent Rise was on top of my most anticipated releases list. And the single itself came with Treasure, a song that explored funk and jazz, a first for the group and something that suited their vocals and image to a T. Trigger's Treasure was on heavy rotation throughout the year, a must when I want to get some energy boost and feast on good vocals. Trigger's Crescent Rise was one of my most played releases of the year. Old Codex with Core Fade. Old Codex were pretty quiet in 2020, but what they released was more than enough to make a bang and impress me. Old Codex is a band that I have been following since 2010 and really have enjoyed listening to their music and seeing plus hearing how much they continue to innovate and evolve their sound and lyrics. Tatsisa Suzuki also has one of the best voices among male CU and is an awesome frontman, thus I am always excited about what Old Codex does next, even if it disappoints me a bit or if it leaves my mouth wide open in awe. Corfade brought a lot of electronica to the mix, but it is a sound that works perfectly well with Old Codex and Tatsu's vocals. The title track was fresh and addictive, whereas Blow Away made chills run down my spine. Tatsu has been showing a more emotional vein since then in his songs, lyrics and compositions, and has been blowing away everyone with his emotional range and the band's versatility to embrace such a delicate, fragile sound that heavily contrasts with their trademark rough image and sound. The single also counted with Updraft, a banger that is still pretty enjoyable to listen to. 
raring for new old codex music and no, the remix album doesn't count as new music for me. Hoping the band has new music in store for us in 2021. Rubio Leopard with Trigger In 2020, Rubio Leopard were on fire. The grunge rock band, part of the Dig Rock franchise and fronted by Makoto Furukawa, were one of the most exciting outfits in 2020. There are only a couple of rock bands in the 2D music industry and most, unfortunately, are pretty generic about their approach to rock music. Focusing on an easy listening sound that is closer to pop rock than it is to gritty and heavy rock, calling for headbanging. Ruby Leopard filled that void for me. Their sound is explosive, gritty, far from beautiful, yet with a bit of a rough allure underneath. They are a band with a mature vibe and a really good mix of grunge rock and hard rock sound. At the same time, Ruby Leopard have massive bass lines. I am a sucker for good bass lines and this band delivers those on a regular basis. The band's first mini-album, Trigger, hit stores in December 2020 and was an instant favorite of mine. There's their edge, but also a delicate, gentler side that adds a cool duality to Ruby Leopard's image and sound. I had Chained to You and Higher Ground playing on loop for quite some time, easily the best songs in that mini-album. Giroaxia with Scatter And because one rock release is not enough, Giroaxia's Scatter finds its way into my list of favorite albums in 2020. The punk rock, pop punk band has been making a case for themselves since early in 2020 and Scatter was the release that stood out the most for me. I was never a big fan of punk rock, I find this rock subgenre to be too loud and lacking depth, but still I was quite curious to see how Mel See You in a 2D or 2.5D punk rock band would fare. I certainly don't listen to Giroaxia because of depth in their lyrics or complexity in their music. There are plenty of other projects and bands that can provide that to me. When I listen to Giroaxia, I want to have fun, let go of my problems, jam, sing and headbang along to their music. Punk rock to me is all about that, letting pent up frustrations out and Giroaxia create that type of music that is perfect to wind down to. Scatter is a banger and one of the best rock songs released in 2020. Tetsuya Kakihara and Nobuhiko Okamoto with Trust and Play I had quite a contradictory feelings before reviewing Trust and Play. I am a big fan of Kakihara's singing and his most recent releases have been up my alley in terms of sound and quality. The problem for me lied with Nobuhiko Okamoto. Don't get me wrong, I do recognize a lot of talent in the lyrics he writes and how theatrical he can be in those. I just am not a big fan of his singing nor his bright brand of pop music. His music doesn't move me. So I had one voice I enjoy and one I am not fond of in the same release. I was sure I would end up not enjoying Trust and Play. And I couldn't be more far off the mark. Honestly, I love when these kinds of things happen. Me having low expectations or sort of dreading reviewing something and being completely blown away with a fantastic album or single. And note that when you review music for a website, most of the times you're not reviewing music from the artists or say you that you love. It is part of the job. It is inevitable and at times there are some names and some projects that I dread reviewing for a wide variety of reasons that range from toxic fandoms that criticize or like to cancel anyone that doesn't like the same things they do, to me simply not recognizing quality in that 2D project or Mail Say You music. 
Trust and Play ended up being one of my favorite albums of the year. It is groovy, funky, playful, but on a mature note, it is good, enjoyable music from start to finish. And the vocals worked pretty well together. I was actually quite surprised that Okamoto was on level with Kakihara, who has improved by leaps and bounds as a singer to the point that he is now one of the best singers in Kinamune. As part of this duo, Nobuhiko Okamoto was shining. He was confident, he was singing music that fits his image and age, a mature and classy sound with a bit of allure to it. And he even wrote lyrics to some of my favorite songs in that mini-album. Tetsuya Kakihara didn't change much his environment as he's been performing a sound pretty close to what we can find in Trust and Play. Still, it is worth mentioning his harmonies with Okamoto as well as the lyrics he penned in this release. Tetsuya Kakihara and Nobuhiko Okamoto's Trust and Play went under the radar for many Seiyu fans, but it is, hands down, one of the best releases of the year. If you can, please do check it out. One Morning is the best song in this mini-album. Anthos with Message When it comes to Anthos, I could basically pick anything they release and I know for sure that I will like their music. They have a pretty unique, stripped down, almost chill out sound to themselves, something that I really enjoy. Their music takes you to unique soundscapes, and even their more intense releases like STOP always have a relaxing undertone. Anthos' sound is tasteful, not exaggerating on EDM, or going way too much into the peppy pop route. They are quite exquisite and unique as far as 2D music groups go. On top of that, they have a good lineup that includes who I consider to be among the best singers in the seiyuu industry. Shunichi Toki, Kento Ito and Toshiki Masuda. The rest of the lineup includes Wataru Komada, Daiki Hamano and Seiichiro Yamashita and is extremely versatile, having impressed me time and time again with their growth and skills. In 2020, Message was the album of theirs that impacted me the most. I am not one to enjoy tropical EDM, but their take on the genre was tasteful and well accomplished. Add to it that it still captures that dreamy, chill-out vibe about the group while going the trendy route, and you get quite the awesome title track. But Silent Message was the song that completely stole my heart. Love its washy scenes and summery vibe. It's the kind of soundscape that I want to run away to and enjoy to the fullest. And those vocals? Pure quality. Yumo Chida with Over. Yumo Uchida had a stellar 2020, counting with two new singles, Over and Image, and an English version of his debut single, New World. I've been a massive fan of Uchida since I first heard him in Uta no Prinsama, stealing the spotlight from Mamoru Miyano in the duet song Mighty Aura. Since then, I have followed his career closely and it came as no surprise when he announced that he was making a solo debut. He deserved, he was exactly the type of seiyuu that should have a solo career. He had the vocals, the talent and the sense to make it and impress everyone. His music is mainly pop with hints of R&B, but with each release he tries something new to add to his trademark sound. Over, however, arrived as a completely new take on his sound. Its leading track, Over, is a massive pop rock song with a bouncing bass line and exciting guitar riffs. A song that demanded a bit more of roughness and rawness from his vocals, something he was able to achieve. 
then things got really fresh and unexpected. Loser keeps that edgy, heavy rock sound, but introduced trap and electronica to its core. As a result, the song is much darker than usual, easily the darkest that Uchida has in his repertoire. But at the same time, he was in for an outstanding performance that mixed deep-toned rap with clean high notes in the chorus and solid mid-tones in the quieter sections. He covered his vocal range quite well and even threw a bonus to his fans by rapping. This has been a trend since 2017 and almost all CU as solo artists have slipped in one way or another a rap verse in one of their songs to please their fans. Yomuchida went as far as adding quite a lot of rap parts in the middle of his clean singing sections and those flowed pretty well. The single wraps up with Buzzer Beater, song that it is a bit closer to what Uchida had been doing up until now. Rap and R&B influenced vocals clash to create one of the freshest songs in his repertoire. It is intense even without the shredding guitars or live drums, which were replaced in that song by samples, and flows really well with the single. Although I loved Image, Over takes the crown as Yuma Uchida's best single in 2020. Solids with Diamond Solids are known for their sexy, risky sound that wraps the listener around their fingers. However, in 2020, their fans and even their voice actors all got to experience a completely different group, as they put aside their sexy image and went with a classy, alluring jazz sound for their entry in the Cards series. Diamond arrived with a bang and made a lot of jaws drop. The swing in Game Is Mine was downright awesome and weirdly enough fit the group like a T. It was a matured and much less in your face hitting on you sound, something that made fans look at solids with new eyes. It's no secret that Solids have one of the best lineups among 2D units. Takuyeguchi and Soma Saito are vocal chameleons. Natsuki Hanai is always reliable and has a lot of technique and flair in his voice. And Yuichiro Umehara has developed into a dependable baritone with a growly, alluring voice tone that, more than ever, works perfectly with this group. Game Is Mine is a blast to listen to. Danceable, fast-paced, addictive, with a lot of big band jazz swing going on and a massive contrabass bass line leading the way on top of all that brass. Certainly a highlight and a nice change of pacing for solids that in 2020 celebrated their fifth anniversary. The main surprise, however, came from the ballad in this release. You heard it well, Solids performed an emotional ballad. This was a first for the group, something that even threw off some of the voice actors in the group, namely Takuyeguchi and Soma Saito that recalled that the recording was strangely refreshing. Really sweet semi-acoustic ballad that had me reaching for that replay button time and time again. Solid's Diamond is really a gem. Makoto Furukawa with From Fairy Tale. Makoto Furukawa's From Fairy Tale arrived later in December 2020, but quickly took a seat as one of the best releases of the year. Furukawa's full band jazz sound overflows elegance and tastefulness, counting with beautiful piano melodies, bouncing contrabass bass lines, fancy jazz drums that bring a lot of color to his music. Makoto Furukawa has turned into one of the most exciting and refreshing solo artists among male seiyuu. His music is fun, flamboyant, 
chaotic and intricate. It's a treat for fans of jazz music like myself and the lyrics penned by Furukawa himself, aside from three songs in the album, are pretty interesting with motifs and stories that are fun to listen unfold. Makoto Furukawa is a master at performing jazz music and you can tell that he loves it by how fun and engaging his performances are. He's feeling it and as a result you can't help but to enjoy the flamboyance and swing of his jazz sound. It is addictive and tasteful. It is fresh among everything most of you have been doing as solo artists. From Fairy Tale is quite the awesome album filled with passionate performances by Makoto Furukawa, a unique jazz sound and fancy lyrics. It is a fantastic first full-length album for him and easily one of the best albums in 2020. I can't stop talking about this album since its release on December 23rd. I have been taking turns at listening to it with yet another big release of the year. Soma Saito's In Bloom. Soma Saito with In Bloom. I've said and wrote it before, but I'll say it again. Soma Saito's In Bloom is 2020's album of the year. Soma Saito mentioned in a couple of interviews that he was terrified of, by releasing darker, more introspective music, fans would change their opinion about him or it could ruin his image as a voice actor that, as you may be aware, is not the same as the solo artist image he has. Same thing applies to various solo artists of Seiyu background, that's why many play it safe with their music and image. Yet Saito's fans were on board the whole time, encouraging him to be darker in his compositions and not be afraid of his image because they'd love anything he'd do. Do what makes you happy. Although Soma Saito's fandom has quite its fair share of crazy, obsessive and delusional fans, the good apples in the fandom came forward and gave him strength when he was feeling fragile and afraid of messing up. This is what fandoms should be about. Supporting their favorites, and encouraging them in their creative endeavors. And look at what happened! It is impossible not to recognize quality and talent in what Soma Saito pulled off with In Bloom. He reinvented his sound, he bared his heart, dark, dramatic and melancholic parts included, to his fans and made an honest, genuine album that defines him as a solo artist. He is no longer composing music for the sake of being fun or entertaining. He is no longer composing music with fans' expectations in his mind. He is composing music for himself. And that's the happiest place he could be in as a solo artist. Exploring the sounds and melodies he loves, scrapping the rule book in music composition and doing his own thing writing lyrics that have a depth and darkness that will leave you wondering about what he meant with those and he is arranging his songs into what he wants his music to truly be like. He has complete creative freedom and that enabled him to spread his wings, go outside of his comfort zone, explore things he was suppressing and challenge himself with music genres, lyrics and singing styles that, up until recently, you wouldn't associate with Soma Saito, the solo artist. In Bloom is also quite the well-produced album. The issues that he had in Quantum Stranger on the mixing and mastering sides were not found in this release. There was a balance in this release and all songs, even if different in tone and intensity, flowed seamlessly, something that cranks up the enjoyment you take from listening to this album. Sound levels were perfect for all instruments and the choice of instruments was tasteful throughout. On the vocal end, Soma Saito made sure to be on top of his game. 
He is still developing his vibrato, but it's much more powerful than a couple of releases ago. At the same time, he was not shy of going for head voice in some of his songs in this album. His falsetto shown, his low growly notes were also present. His mid-tones are rock-solid consistent. Hard to find flaws in Saito's vocals. He is on such a high level as a singer and still keeps on improving with each release. On the composition side, there are no words that I haven't said before to describe it. For example, listen to Isana. That song will make you cry. It will send chills down your spine. The shoegaze rock, distant and final instrumental and empty soundscape in which you are slowly drowning puts you in a really strange place. Saito composed this song in quite a unique way, extending it for 8 minutes of drowning in sorrow. And Saito's haunting, muffled, distant vocals deal the final blow, say the last goodbye, send you off. The apparent contained way in which he performs a song, instrumental and vocals, carries much more emotion underneath. As far as masterful compositions go, Isana is among Saito's best to date. Chills all over when listening to this song and the weird, bittersweet taste is left after listening to it. You can't help but to feel that you've just experienced something akin to death in this song. And you can't escape from it. There's no happy ending. It's hauntingly beautiful. On the opposite pole, Saito went full-on sexy for Vampire Weekend, exuding a charisma and allure that, up until now, weren't synonymous with his image as a solo artist. And he wrote, composed and arranged his first ever song, the nostalgic yet alluring Bookmark. The arrangement credits were shared with guest rapper Jay, but you can already have an idea of what you can expect from Saito's arrangements in the future. Clean, bass-centric and carrying quite a lot of emotion. Emo rock, jazz, R&B, bossa nova, shoegaze rock, minimalistic EDM, ballads, romantic songs and carefree surfer rock tunes. All these music genres showcase a composer with an extensive and deep music knowledge. If there's one thing that Soma Saito's In Bloom has set in stone, aside from being the best album released to date by a male CU, is that Saito is a generational talent. A one in a generation type of talent. And what a pleasure it has been to see him blooming into the outstanding singer and songwriter that he is. I went quite long on this episode, but I hope you found some releases interesting and are planning on checking those. There were plenty more CDs that impressed me in 2020. After all, this was a fantastic year for fans of music performed by voice actors. There was music for everyone, for every taste, as exquisite as it may be. Male CU grew as solo artists, studio music groups matured, bands approached their sound in a more emotional way. 2020 may have sucked as a year, but there were plenty of positives to take if you focus only on what Mail CU and 2D music groups offered you. In my 11 years reviewing Mail CU and 2D music, this was the year when the best and most memorable music was released. Now tell me, what were your favorite releases in 2020? I'd love to know your choices, so make sure to leave those in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly mail CU and music related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of CU Lounge. 
Thank you for listening and see you around. Happy New Year!